Big Dong Zhong is one of the best units in the game, and I'm tired of pretending he's not. Hello, my name is Psyche, and this is going to be one of my most anticipated videos I wanted to make. Now that Zhang Li is back again for another rerun for the release of 4.0, there's no doubt going to be a lot of discussion surrounding whether or not he's still worth a pull now that a new region has been out. And my response to this question is still a resounding yes. With an asterisk, but we can talk about that later. While a small vocal minority of meta players might advise you to not pull for him, in this video, I'm going to argue that Zhang Li is actually one of the best characters you can have, and in fact, I'm going to argue that Geo Grandpa over here is actually meta. Let's clear up some things. Who is the Geo Archon and why should you care? Well, apart from being one of the few times in the game where a character actually got buffed, Zhang Li's most noticeable role is a shielder, and a damn good one at that. Most players will slot him in into a team as the flex unit, as shielders are definitely not going to be everyone's cup of tea. But he's not just any shielder. His shield, when compared to other units in the same role, absolutely obliterates the competition. This little geo bubble is made from pure titanium because unless you're in the deepest part of the abyss and get beaten up by the consecrated beasts, this shield will simply not break. This essentially negates the need for you to learn the dodge mechanic and can even erase the need for a healer in most cases. His skill ability is the only one that matters as holding it will create a jade shield and via the A1 passive will fortify itself should it take damage. As a shield bot, his normal attack, burst, and personal damage are irrelevant. The skill is what he's known for. I'll get to the spicy discussion part a bit later, but you can skip forward to it via the chapters if you wish. I do want to give a quick rundown on how to build Zhang Li as a shield bot, in case anyone wants to know how to build him. While you can build him for hybrid slash support or maybe even a physical DPS role, the shielder role is his easiest to build and most known playstyle. His shield scales off max HP, so you literally just want that and nothing else. Just use the Black Castle, a 3-star weapon for the HP stat, and run the 4-piece Tenacity set. But don't worry, the substats hardly matter. Running a full HP% percent setup, try to aim for 40,000 max HP. You can get crit substats if you want, but it's not going to be a big damage boost, so the farming process should be a cakewalk. You want HP% percent or flat HP for substats if they're available. Energy recharge, EM, and crit just don't matter. Leveling talents, you just need to level his skill, the other ones don't matter since you're just going to hold E and switch to another character. Mine is crowned at level 10, but don't feel forced to max it out. Levels 6 or 8 are also good commitment numbers if you're short on resources. Alright, time to get spicy, so let's talk about why Zhang Li is a hot topic in the Genshin Impact community, especially for meta players. Zhang Li as a shield bot pretty much trivializes all overworld content. His shield is so durable that you can walk straight into a wall of missiles and come out of it unscathed. With his shield up, you don't need to run a healer, you don't need to learn iframes via dodging, and you don't need a high amount of skill to use him. These principles pretty much goes against all aspects of meta play. When it comes to endgame content, Floor 12 Abyss usually demands a lot of mechanical execution to fully clear it. You do need to learn team rotations, you do need to optimize your animations and iframes, and you do need to play well moment by moment to not waste any time being knocked back or healing your team. A major argument for why you shouldn't pose on Lee is that he does not contribute to your team damage, and is a handicap for your team where another damage support or DPS could have been run in his place to reach a faster clear time in your abyss. Oh, and also skill issue, just learn how to dodge. The argument is essentially saying that because there is a timer in the abyss, you actually do need to play optimally and run characters that all contribute to doing damage. And for the record, I do agree with this. The only thing is, the spiral abyss counts for like 1% of the entire game. Meaning this philosophy of thinking doesn't apply to the other 99% of your experience playing Genshin. The issue with discussing meta in this game I found in the two years I have been playing is that online content tends to overblown the importance of it. Unless you're in Floor 11 or 12 Abyss, terms like rotations or iframes or snapshotting or ICD just don't really matter. In overworld content, events, domains, and even some bosses, you can get away with taking your sweet time tackling them. There's no timer to force you to play optimally. There was a combat event a couple patches back where you could modify the fights to challenge yourself. And one of the mods was a timer. Some players maxed out all the other settings but turned off the timer. 
And sure, the runs took like 30 minutes, but people were having fun, and they felt accomplished. Genshin Impact is designed as a casual, laid-back game. It was never really meant to appeal to the hardcore meta players that attempt to play the game as optimally as possible. While that crowd does exist as a very vocal minority, they don't represent the general player base as a whole. If you want to challenge yourself, build up meta characters, become a dodge roll master, and ace floor 12 abyss, then by all means do that. But just know that the game is not designed for that kind of play. Because if I did want to challenge myself in a game, i just go play another game that's, you know, actually designed to challenge the player. So how does this tie into Zhong Li? Well, while the sentiment surrounding this old man is generally favorable, there is a small minority of meta players that will advise you to not pull for him, as doing so will negate any need for you to improve at the game, since the game pretty much becomes easy mode when you have him. However, as I said in the previous section, other than the Abyss Endgame, there's actually no need for you to get good at playing Genshin. Some players are happy just to press some buttons and have fun looking at cool cutscenes, playing some event minigames, and take their time exploring the world. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. In the intro of this video, I said that I'm going to argue that Zhang Li, despite offering no personal damage to your team, should actually be considered as a meta character. Well, how can that be? Allow me to explain. Let's first establish, at least in the context of Genshin, what it means for a character to be considered meta. I don't think it's unfair to say characters like Bennett, Shangling, Xingqiu, Nahida are considered meta, and they're referred that way because of how much damage they enable you to do with your team. The term meta or meta game is usually used in competitive games as a term to describe items, plays, or strategies that are considered dominant, or used to beat the competition, or a way to reach the objective with a path of least resistance, aka the quickest way to achieve victory. Well, in Genshin, there's two problems. First, the game is not competitive. There's no rankings, leaderboards, or strict PvP elements. Second, what does it even mean to achieve victory in Genshin? You could argue that the victory condition is to 36-star the Abyss that Hoyoverse throws at us every rotation, and I could see that. But what if I said there is another way that a character can be considered meta? Let's take a look at another gacha game, Fate Grand Order. In this game, a few units are considered meta, but not for reasons you may think. Since the majority of the endgame is just farming for upgrade materials, this is true for Genshin and every other gacha game too, by the way. In Fate, people wanted to find what the most efficient way to farm content was. Everything changed when a character called Scotthawk Scotty was released into the game. She is a support unit that buffs your main DPS, but buffs them in a very particular way. Scotty enabled something known as three-turn farming. Since there are three waves of enemies in the vast majority of levels, the most efficient way to clear them as fast as possible is to spend one turn each in each wave. While three-turn farming did technically exist before Scotty, you had to use very specific comps or setups that only big spenders in the game could pull off. Now, this changed when Scotty entered the scene. If a DPS unit had an AoE Noble Phantasm, which, you know, is basically a unit's ultimate attack? You're a weeb, you watch Fate, right? Anyways, in theory, since you need to fill up a unit's NP gauge to 100% in order to use it, if you could somehow fill that gauge to full for each of the three waves, you could fire off the unit's Noble Phantasm three times in a row, clearing each wave with a single turn, meaning you can clear the level with the minimal amount of turns and time possible. Now, there's a bit more gameplay features that go into this, but essentially, if you had a Scotty of your own, had a good DPS unit that was compatible, and used someone else's support Scotty as well, you could perform something called quick looping. Quick being one of the three car types in the game, and what was only a theory before could now actually be achieved. The Scotty era was also known as the quick meta. Ever since Scotty, there has been two other contenders that allowed three-turn farming, with the other two card types, with the most recent known as the Buster meta. So, was Scotty a powerful unit? Well, actually no. In challenge content, her support capabilities were not as good as some other options in the game. She wasn't considered meta because she was the best support or the best damage dealer. She was considered meta simply because she allowed you to farm content at max efficiency. 
In Genshin, my honest opinion is that our competition is not with other players, but against Hoyoverse. It's them that creates every Abyss rotation. It's their decision to not put any quality of life improvements that could shave down our daily playtime. I'm talking no skip button, no quick farm option, no keyboard shortcuts, no story replay. Which are pretty much staple in other gacha games by the way. Hoyoverse roadblocks players in two ways. In difficulty and inconvenience. Difficulty is when content is challenging and requires a lot of mechanical gameplay, such as a boss fight in a Souls game, or in this case playing Floor 12 Abyss. Assuming you win, a run only takes around 6 minutes or so. It's butt-clenching action and you gotta micromanage a lot of things to get it right, but this kind of content is meant to challenge you. The other type of roadblock, Inconvenience, is about making players do monotonous things to draw out their playtime, that's generally considered not fun. These activities are not challenging, anyone can do them, but it's inconvenient. It's something you'd rather skip or at least optimize doing, so you can reach your goal faster and get to doing the fun part quicker. Again, I don't think a lot of people want to spend time farming artifacts or talent books, but it's something you gotta do in order to maximize your efficiency and make progress. I believe the reason why the current meta characters are considered so is because they allow you to beat Hoyoverse in the difficulty compartment, namely in the Spiral Abyss. It's the path of least resistance to maxing out stars and getting those sweet 150 Primo gems. However, I am proposing that Zhongli is considered meta because he allows you to beat Hoyoverse in the other type of roadblock. What Geodaddy provides in abundance is not damage, but comfort. When you're in the endgame, pretty much all you're doing is completing your dailies, spend your resin, and farm some artifacts. Then you log off and the cycle repeats itself. It's always grind o'clock in the endgame. You know that frost domain with the Mondstadt talent books? Well, instead of getting stunlocked for the 10th time and running out of stamina, bring Zhang Li and you'll never have to dread about that again. Are the Abyss Mages in the Noblesse domain giving you a hard time? Now they do no damage. Is the Hydro Bird boss thing about to burst a Hydro Bubble that deals damage to the entire battle platform? Well now you don't need to move a muscle. Is Ajdaha draining your health alongside your sanity? Well Zhang Li's shield turns that fight down to easy mode. Is your Hu Tao on constant life support? Well Zhang Li's shield is a better cure than American healthcare. And now you can be on 1 HP and maximize your damage with no risk. Zhang Li may not have any offensive skills, but his shield makes your moment-to-moment -moment casual play a lot easier and smoother. In case that's not enough, here's one more. You know how upgrading a weapon requires that purple crystal thing? And since Genshin is a live service, you always need it to upgrade new ones for as long as you play this game? Well, you gotta find the crystal ore veins in the world and mine them. You could do it the boring way with a claymore, hacking away at the rocks one by one, but with Zhang Li, you can just do this. While this may not look impressive to you, think about every time you need this crystal to level up a new weapon you receive. And think about how much time Zhang Li could have saved you if you did this every ore vein, at every location, and every farming session. I'm willing to bet that there's very few players in the world that actually likes to farm rocks and artifact domains. You most likely see these activities as chores, something you need to get done in order to make progress. In some other games, there is a quick farm feature, where if the game thinks you're powerful enough to beat a level with ease, it will just give you the option to say, hey, we know you're good enough for this, so we'll just give you the rewards right away and save you the hassle of running the level. This obviously does not exist in Genshin, though considering how well monetized and other systems in place to retain players, I don't find it a stretch to say that a skip button for cutscenes, a quick farm feature, keyboard shortcuts, and some other quality of life changes will never be added to the game, because doing some will make it easier for you to navigate around, and Hoyoverse has an incentive to keep you playing for as long as possible, even if there are things that inconvenience you. I believe that in the areas that can save you time, then Zhang Li is the man for the job, hence why I believe he is a meta character for beating Hoyoverse in a type of roadblock that most people don't pay attention to. He is able to optimize your playtime and skip some of the most monotonous activities so you can reach your goal quicker. To finalize my point, I'm going to show an example from the real world why convenience is more important than you think. I don't think it's a coincidence that when the pandemic hit in 2020, Netflix got a huge influx of subscribers. 
because instead of resorting to piracy, people realized that just by paying a couple dollars every month, you can have every TV show slash movie at your fingertips without worrying about pirating from shady sites and finding seeded torrents to download them quicker. The truth is, if the alternative is just too much of a hassle to do, people will pay for convenience. It's not a stretch to say that having Zhongli in your roster turns the game into easy mode. There's a select number of units that I would consider game-changing, and Chiu Grandpa is one of them. Having Zhongli will change your account. He's able to make any challenge less threatening and make casual play a lot smoother. As such, I'm giving Zhongli a 4 out of 5 rating. For me, just popping his shield makes it so that you'll never have to worry about allies dying, learning how to dodge, and makes farming crystals a breeze. He is one of the best flexible units to fit into a team that provides a lot of comfort. The only caveat is that I do agree that if you are someone that wants to play Genshin for the challenge, and you do want to learn how to be more optimized in your gameplay and challenge the hardest depths of the abyss, then I can't see how Zhongli might not be a good pull, as having him will basically make it really hard to learn dodge timings, and play more offensively. He's the training wheel that's really hard to remove, but once again, Genshin is primarily designed as a casual, laid-back experience. You don't have to take off the training wheels to enjoy this game. As a filthy casual myself, Big Dong Zong is one of the most valuable units in my roster, and is usually my go-to when it comes to just sitting back and enjoy exploring the world after a long day. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis on Zhong Li and the statistics of his value now that we've reached the Fontaine era. I'm personally looking forward to finishing off the desert so I can finally have a new region to explore. As always, thank you for tuning in, and remember, have fun with the game.